remind me of an interesting story uh, that I always tell as well. Um, I remember when, uh, when, when I wanted to do graphic design. Yeah. And um, I remember in high school, the only thing that I was good at was painting and um, computers. Because my dad had me, uh, computers at my house, so I used to put them together and, you know, mess around with them. And um, drawing and painting was just my talent at yeah, the time. Yeah. Um, so I remember after, after my trip, I approached my parents, I'm like, I want to do graphic design. And they said, okay, uh, how much is this graphic design? And I'm like, it's 25,000 rand a year. And they like, okay, so what is this graphic design? You know, because they're trying to understand what is it, you know? Yeah. And uh, I'm like, the best way that I could describe it is either it's painting or drawing on a computer. And my mother told me like, boy, why don't you do this design without the 25K? Yeah, yeah. And I was like... But no, and she was like, "Why was I to Kate Terry? Because I'm sure, <laughs> you know, you'd you, you, you'd get a better return of in, investment, you know, within catering than you would with graphic design or anything of the arts." Of course. The love for art thing started early, you know. Um, whenever I'm bored or whenever I need a piece of mind, I will I will sketch to a point where I even sketch on my notebook. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, there's a time you, you also have like a homework book mm. as well, the back of it. I remember at some yeah, point I did yeah. get caught. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think at the time it was, it was just, I think when you grow up around and you're doing that, people are telling you, I don't know, they will even use like, hey, so yeah, yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. But turning that into a career, it was never an option. Yes, definitely. Because, like you're saying, with, with, with parents, at, at the time with parents, they, their main focus is they send you to, to school. When you finish school, when you go to tertiary, it has to be something tailoring, like, see, that's it. it has to be to do with engineering, teaching, doctor, doctor, yeah. you know, or become a cop yeah. or a lawyer. Yeah. So, and interesting now, you mentioned the laboratory computer because it was the time IT as well. Yeah. yeah, like there was a time IT was very, very, was, was, was famous. Yeah, Everybody was doing IT. exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, I think after high school, I'm, I mean, I did, I did well in high school. Yeah. I got a bursary from, um, from Sasol mm -hmm. to go and study chemical engineering. Okay. I did enroll uh, with, um, with Val. Yeah. And in 2003, yeah. I was actually there for like three months. Really? Three months, after three months. Um, actually, what happened was that uh, during my high school, yeah. um, there was um, there was this campaign. Yeah, um, I think student against um, against against crime in schools. Yeah, I think it used to called cold or something. Yeah. they under their umbrella they used to have. Um, I think they had a space for art. Yeah, which um, it covers like theater. Um, covers um, music, it actually also covered uh, visual arts. Yeah. Um, and at the time I did enter, because what they would do is that they would sort of invite schools, yeah. and then they would, and then the school would sort of choose, or they would participate either with uh, theatre or with music. So out of the whole province, I was the only one who actually did actually submit for the visual Jeez. arts. That's amazing. But still, it wasn't, it wasn't, it didn't even um, give me that thing. Already. Later on, I can actually, you know, make this or turn this into a career. Okay, so how did you move from engineering to fine arts? At that time, Johnson and Johnson was actually offering bursary. Ah, yes. But because of already in said in early three months in engineering, yes. they they had a space open called Artist Proof Studio. Okay. Which it was a community based college. Okay. When I went in, because they had a screening. When I went in, I showed them my portfolio. They actually pushed me to come in as a full-time student. Oh, and, and you dropped engineering? Then I dropped engineering. And now, uh, how did your parents react <laughs> to you dropping <laughs> engineering <laughs> for something that they don't understand? <laughs> My father was not happy at all. He, yes. was, he was not happy at all. Because, I mean, the first question he was like, okay, like, 
how, how are you gonna make money? Yeah. Like, explain it to me. Like just explain it to me. Yeah. Okay. So you're gonna go, and I mean, you used to call painting or drawing the papaya. Like you're gonna go and do the papaya, <laughs> papaya the house, and then you know. I think at that time I got so intimidated because mm. you know how it is with parents, and especially if during you were raised to respect them. Yeah. So coming back, I had doubts, but because of the love of art, I, I didn't really hesitate to continue. Yeah. So I did my full three years. Yeah. I had my first, uh, my first solo ex uh, exhibition at Melrose Arc with um, um, Michael Ovid. At the yes, time it was yes. called, uh, I think, uh, um, Ovid Contemporary. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, which yeah. I think, um, I mean, at the time he was pushing uh, Kutinai. Yes, Kuzi. Yes. He was pushing Kuzi. Yeah. He was pushing uh, Hojin. Yes. So, I mean, he decided to give me a show. How did that inspire you to even carry on as, a, as, a, as an artist? In Interesting way? enough, like the overall um, title of the show was Walk With Me. Yes. And um, I was like reflecting back to where I was coming from and where I was going. Mm. I mean, the shows got sold within an hour of and the hour. opening. Like sold out? Sold out. Damn. And I was fresh from college. I didn't really even, you know, it didn't really get into my head at that time. Yeah. Because you know how it is, like you hear stories, they tell you like, yeah, I mean, as artists, you, you'll need 20 years for you, for people to start appreciating your work. Yeah. Um, but what it did is that I gained a little bit of confidence. Mm. Goes it, a long way. It goes a long way. Mm. Now, for someone to spend money on your work. On your work. That's something else. That's As exactly. an artist, that, 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 that's something that gives you confidence. And okay, if you can spend this much money, so can the next person, so can the next person. That's exactly that. And, and I'm on the right track. Yeah. It's an affirmation. Yeah. Yeah. But it's like, at the same time, you're early. You know, you are like still fresh. Yeah. So you haven't actually understand the dynamic of the of, game. Of, of, of the industry. Of the well. industry as yeah. well. There's... Um, things that people always tell you, like, you're breaking early, yeah. you won't even last. You know, there's people who literally gave me, like, now nah, we give him, like, three, four years. Then he'll be out. And then he'll be out, like the rest of them. How, how did that, um, those kind of comments affect your work or affect your, your, your confidence? Because I'm sure you were, like, so, in three years I'll be done. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know what I've learned as well is that, especially when you're doing something with a passion, you know, you become ignorant mm. to those who are negative to you. True. Completely. Mm. And it didn't get into my head that I had a first sold exhibition as a, as a student. And it sold out. And it sold out. Mm. I think it was like, okay, it's, it's going to be quite a long and interesting journey. Yeah. Because at, at, at the same time, you know, you... You are surrounded by those who have been in the industry for years. For years, yeah. You know, yeah. you're rubbing shoulders with them. Yeah. But all of them, they don't actually give you the full info in terms of the politics of the art. And they don't actually prepare you. I think every, a lot of people have seen your work. Yeah. You, you, you're commercially viable. Yeah. And at, at, at this age as well, as, as, as a painter, yeah. it's very unheard of to, 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 for us to know a black successful painter yeah. who sells out uh, galleries, who's known worldwide. Yeah. How do you keep the humility and how do you keep grounded? I think in almost every household, there's yeah. nothing that you never forget where you come from. Yeah. You know, I think a lot of kids are, are being raised within an environment where there's respect. Yeah. That's the first thing. Yeah. You know, and I think for me that was the first thing I was like, Regardless of what I do, I have to have respect for others. Mm. I don't care of their background. Yeah. And that is one thing that I was like... You cannot compromise on Never. This. Yeah. How easy is it uh, for, for, for you to fall in within the trap of, 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 um, of, of being a celebrity or being famous or obviously and making those kind of... Decisions yeah. because you're influenced by yeah. the people around you. How yeah. easy it is to is it to fall into that trap as well? Personally, I feel like every, everyone deserves mm. to have that VIP treatment. Yeah. And then 
I think in most cases, people tend to take advantage and say, okay, fine. You know, people connect or love what I do. Mm. So therefore, I have the right mm. to demand certain things. You know, and then I have the right to be rude. True. And it means, true, true. and then you invite a new crowd into your space as well. Mm. And that new crowd, they all come because of they all want that title that you carry around. So it's almost, you know, when you think about it, it's almost like being a, a boxing champion. The moment when you take that crown, mm. you've got a lot of friends. A lot of friends and a lot of people who want to take that crown away from you. The difference is that obviously with that, it's a, you compete for it. Yeah. But with what we do is that people are just coming in to take. Yeah. They're not even going to give you a chance for you to even fight for it. No. You know? Yeah. And I think that's what I've... And it, it's crazy because when you think about it, like those are the things that you read about almost every day. Yes, even before you yes, became famous. Yes, you knew yes. that... This is the, the life. Exactly. Yeah. You know? And you start having the taste of that. Other people enjoy it. They get addicted to that life. Yeah, the attention, the, the, yeah. the, the, you know, the VIP treatment. The VIP treatment. Yeah. And it slowly tend, I mean, it, it will slowly drive you away from what you do. Mm, the core of why you started of course. painting, exactly. why you started singing, why you started drawing. One thing I've learned is that nowadays it's even hard for me to have like a full week in the studio. Uh, the only way for me to do that is either I have to shut my phone or I have to read my email. Then I'll, I'll, I'll work peacefully. But other than that, you wake up, and some of the things are innocent. You find that you know people will be like, "Oh, I, I want. Can you come and do this one? Can you?" Mm -hmm. So your priorities slowly take this. They slowly get yeah. They you get know. disrupted. As well. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And then what's going to happen later on? You're going to forget the reason why you're there. Yeah. So how do you how do you keep that that core? What, what is it that you do so that you, you remember that core? Because like um, you are agreeing that it's, it, it is easy to yeah. forget. Yeah. How I do it is simple. I'm an artist. Yeah. That's, that's the only thing that I know right mm -hmm. now. That yeah. even when I close, I can easily draw or paint yeah. with my eyes closed. Yeah. A lot of us don't, don't understand the business of, of, of being a painter. Um, how do you make money in in this industry and who makes the most money because I'm sure there's yeah yeah there's money involved here yeah. and there's big money involved there's always so, been there's always been big money involved yeah in the arts and yeah. you know interesting enough when you when you look at I mean now when you think about what is like the most expensive item in the world yeah pretty much like the mo mostly side the side works yeah true True. Um, now, when you start mentioning the business side of it, yeah. in the beginning I was like, no, I mean, it's there's no way that I'm I'm a businessman. Yeah. But the problem was that there was money involved. You have to be a businessman. You have to be a businessman yeah. when there's certain value attached to your art. Yeah. And that's your God-given talent. That's it. Your, exactly. Yeah. That's your soul being put out there. Yeah. You know, you, you like, some people will, will, will refer it as a walking mine. Mm. You almost more like a walking mine and then everyone just wants to have that piece of gold. How does the gallery and artist thing work and, and what are the technicalities? Yeah. Do do? Is, it, is it like a, like, um, like a music contract where you get signed for five years or is it just the, you just come in and exhibit your thing and, and leave and you get the money? How yeah. does it work? Um, you know what, with, um, with small galleries, you can, you can just have an agreement where you have a show yeah. with them and then they take whatever percentage that you, you guys agree upon yeah. and then you go separate ways. Yeah. But we all know that, um, you know, art, the moment it becomes like an investment, yeah. what's what so-called investment art, yeah. it changes, the rules changes completely yeah. Yeah. as well. Now, you're dealing with the big galleries. Yes. Some people will call them the big sharks. Yeah. And now it gets to a point where you guys have to agree on percentage. Yeah. yeah. And the sad thing is that, you know, nowadays it's easy. You can just easily exhibit anywhere. Yeah. But the problem is that how they've now designed a system to say, if I want to go and 
and exhibit at the Tate Modern Art. Yeah. You'll need to have a reference, and that reference is it's a gallery, unfortunately. Uh, so you are attached to a gallery as an artist? Yeah. Okay. You, when you're asking to say who's making more money between the gallery and the artist, the yeah. question is who's creating the work is the yeah. artist. Yeah. But the gallery will demand 50%. That's a lot. And when you actually ask yourself for what, they'll just tell you like for marketing. You can drive around South Africa. There's never been one single billboard. That is God. Uh, an uh, art piece. Exactly. So do, can you survive as a painter being an independent painter? You can. Do you, as an artist, um, determine the price or does the gallery determine the price? In the beginning when you start, you, you, you kind of like determine your prices. Yeah. And then there's, the market will start taking over. Ah, then there's, a, there's like benchmarks. There's benchmarks. If your, your work start growing, and you're selling well, like every year just to go up with 30 or 40%. Yeah. Also, there's rankings as well. There is rankings as ah, well. And then you've got auction houses as well that are actually auctioning your work. Another year, you actually have to evaluate those things. Mm -hmm. And from those days, you combine them. Let's say like now, my work, maybe next year was supposed to go up with 20%. Yeah. And then I had a show this year, and then I had art fair there, and then I, I had an auction. Yeah. Eventually, it moved from 20% to 60%. Where to from here? What does the future look like? It looks brighter than I thought. Is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I think, because being an artist is like a lifetime thing. Yeah. So you can never set a plan to say, you know, in three years, this is where I want to see myself. Yeah. But, you know, one thing that I'm even certain about is, I think, you know, when you keep on inspiring, mm. you know, you get inspired as well. Yeah. And my future plan is just to continue to grow as an artist. Mm. And not just within the local, local yeah. scale, but also within the international scale as well. Yeah. Um, I think being the generation that would go down to history as people yeah. who have actually contributed within, not just only the art as well, but within the social accept, especially with the theme that I've actually chose as well, yeah. focusing on the youth. My man, thank you for your time. Josh, thank you for having me. Uh, it's, it's just... I hope you enjoyed uh, Marvel's room. And uh, yeah, man, it was, uh, it was a pleasure spending the day with you and, uh, you know, shooting you and giving us light into your world, you know, and how it works, you know. So thank you very much, my man. No, thank you for, for inviting me. I didn't really think that it was going to be. <laughs> <laughs> this long, but I don't really regret anything. It's, a, I think it's, it's been an experience. Yeah, more than anything. Yeah. I think it's it's been one of those priceless ex experiences that I had, especially you know from the photo shoot and to come in have like this conversation yeah. as well. You know, thank you. It was thank you. completely different from what I imagined because normally interviews <laughs> you always <laughs> think that no, nah, it's just gonna be these questions and that. But no. I think um, how you guys kind of like. Just felt like I'm sitting in my my studio and having a conversation with someone. Yeah, because that's what it's all about, you know, having conversations yeah. with men that are changing industries within their industries, you know. So yeah. we are here to celebrate men like you because um, we know that um, men as well don't have the good connotation out there. You know? Yeah. So we celebrate the ones that, that are doing stuff, that are pushing the boundaries and, um, you know, so that they can inspire others to be better men. Yeah. Because that's what Marvin is about, yeah. to inspire, you know, to be a better man. No, I mean, it's, I think it's... Thank you for actually making me... Because I didn't really think that uh, what I was doing has had so much influence to others. No, it does. So, Definitely. We, yeah. we, we've, been, we've been watching. We've <laughs> so been watching. Much. We've been watching. So I think that, that would definitely... Um, I think it will sort of encourage and inspire me to continue what, I, what I'm doing, doing exactly. Yeah. Uh, I think that's, that's one thing that I'm going to take home with. Right. That, yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mama. Yeah.